My name is Megan O'Brien. I'm a research scientist in the Technology Innovation Hub at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. So we're very excited to talk to you today about a massive ongoing project called Project Corbett, which is a collaboration between the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab, Northwestern University, Lurie Children's Hospital, and Pathways.org. Simply by observing a child's movements early in life can tell us a lot about the way that their brains and bodies are developing. So by certain ages, children should be learning new skills, new behaviors, whether that's making fidgeting movements of their arms and legs while they're lying on their back, or lifting their head up when they're placed on their tummy. So if a child is missing these critical milestones, that suggests to us that there may be some underlying uh, disease or deficit in their motor development. So the goal of this project is to completely transform the way that we detect and then intervene for children who have atypical motor development. But oftentimes, these symptoms might be mild or moderate and very difficult to pick up by observation alone. And so what this allows us to do is then build advanced machine learning algorithms to learn from that data the underlying patterns that might indicate a child uh, is developing atypically or typically with new technologies, new ways to measure those movements, determine whether they're coming from a healthy, typical range of development, or whether it might indicate some, some atypical development, such as from an underlying disease or deficit. My name is John Rogers. I'm on the faculty at Northwestern University. Current assessments of neuromotor uh, abilities are done by trained neurologists, uh, and that works pretty well uh, at hospitals who have those sorts of personnel on staff. We've been interested in whether advances in engineering science could bring a more quantitative, uh, reproducible, and deployable scheme for assessing uh, an infant's health in terms of their uh, neuromotor uh, characteristics. And the idea is that that kind of information could be obtained either in a hospital or an advanced rehabilitation clinic, but likewise in a home setting, in a remote setting, really anywhere around the globe, uh, to, to allow for a, a greater democratization, I guess, of this very important assessment that's done uh, with many infants at the earliest stages of life. In one phase of the study, we're using novel miniaturized sensors that Dr. Rogers and his team have developed to measure an infant's movements at a higher resolution than have ever been done before. Our contributions to this broader program involve the development of very tiny sensors, starting from really base materials, the sort of copper-coated sheets of plastic, uh, and we etch into the copper all of the interconnect traces. We add electronic components on top. We have a process for sort of folding it into a very compact geometry. Very, very, very thin, sort of the size of a postage stamp, essentially. Flexible and soft, and so compatible with the fragile skin of a newborn, for, for example. Uh, and they can be applied directly to the skin with a, um, a soft, gentle adhesive uh, that mounts on the back side of this device to allow uh, it to be mounted at any location across the body. We typically mount a couple of devices on each of the arms, both of the legs, one on the chest and one on the forehead. Uh, and they're all, all operating in a wirelessly time-synchronized manner, each one of which is providing an independent data stream, but they're all time-correlated. So you can take all of that data, you can reproduce the kinds of motions that were actually happening in avatar form in a quantitative way. That would be one way to use these technologies. The other would be just simply take all of the data, use advanced machine learning and artificial intelligence techniques to process the data itself to develop a general motor assessment score. So you can uh, sort of quantitatively define the development status of the infant at any different uh, point dur during their development cycle. So this is where sensor data really comes in, that even though visually we might not be able to see uh, changes in the way that a baby might be moving its arms and legs, we can create a three-dimensional representation of a child's movements and then track that at a very fine resolution, shortly after birth all the way up until they turn one to two years of age. These kinds of devices are not only reproducing what's done in the clinic today in novel form factors, smaller sizes, more gentle skin interfaces, but they're allowing completely new types of data streams that can be used to develop a deeper understanding of uh, health status. So we're building that database, we're beginning to apply advanced machine learning uh, techniques to those data streams to make these general motor assessments so that they can be correlated to assessments made 
uh, maybe in a more qualitative sense by trained neurologists. And uh, that's part of the process for developing the artificial intelligence algorithms is to take the data streams, make sure that the assessment agrees with that associated with a trained neurologist, and then eventually think about democratizing this kind of technology and making it available to all. We're not specifically targeting cerebral palsy or just stroke or just coordination disorders. It's any child who might be at risk for atypical motor development. Again, this is a problem that no one's ever tried to tackle before, and if successful, we will be the first to have this generalizable diagnostic tool for infants early in life to detect atypical motor development. I'm Dr. Matthew Davis, and I'm a primary care pediatrician and the head of pediatrics at Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago and Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. It is my pleasure to work with my colleagues at Lurie Children's and the colleagues of Dr. Rogers and his team and Dr. O'Brien and her team at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab to make sure we're doing all that we can for infants with atypical motor development. You've heard from Dr. Rogers about the wireless sensors and you've heard from Dr. O'Brien about the computational models that are helping interpret the signals from the sensors. And it's the job of the team at Lurie Children's to then intervene for kids who have atypical motor development. That intervention takes the form of a special team of neonatal physical therapists who are bringing their expertise to the crib side in the neonatal intensive care unit at Lurie Children's. There at the crib side, these physical therapists work with the infants to understand what types of therapeutic support do they need and then to teach those approaches to those baby's parents. Then after the babies go home, the physical therapy visits continue, and so does the support from the parents at home. Along with Dr. Rogers and Dr. O'Brien and their colleagues, we're going to follow those infants over the first year of life for each of them to find out what progress are we making for those infants who initially had atypical findings, and what more do we need to do for infants whose atypical motor development may persist. By doing that, we are intervening for a particularly high-risk group whose access to physical therapy early in life is going to be provided through Project Corbett earlier than ever before. A challenge we face is that it's not only infants in the neonatal intensive care unit who might develop atypical motor movements. In fact, some infants born after a healthy full-term pregnancy might develop atypical motor development in the first few months of life, sometimes for reasons we don't completely understand. But we need to find them. And so what we've done in teamwork with Pathways.org is to develop a medical curriculum for pediatricians and other clinicians in the community to help them get more confidence and competence to detect atypical motor development when infants are brought in for routine checkups. What that means is we've had to figure out a way to weave in this additional information seamlessly into the routines that pediatricians have so they can effectively and efficiently find those kids with atypical movements. By developing an online curriculum supplemented by guides that are available in their practices, what we've provided to pediatricians, we've heard from them, is unprecedented. We've already rolled out this curriculum online to dozens of doctors here in Chicago and also to trainees, individuals who are training to be the pediatricians of the future because we want to provide a safety net to catch all those kids with atypical motor development and have the doctors refer those kids for physical therapy much earlier than kids are typically picked up today and referred. With Project Corbett and also the medical curriculum, the Ryan Family Foundation is supporting innovative work that's designed to find children with atypical motor development and make sure they get to that very helpful physical therapy as early as they can. As a primary care community-based pediatrician myself, I know how challenging it is to try to do everything that we try to accomplish in a routine checkup for every child. One of the greatest gifts that we've been able to give primary care practicing pediatricians, family physicians, nurse practitioners with a medical curriculum project is this gift of an integrated approach that can be brought into routine care and change the outcome for kids who have atypical motor development. When we can improve the practice and the support that primary care clinicians are providing for families, we know that we're gonna be changing the care that children are receiving.